Hi guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff, and today we are looking at a new 12 year old Ben Rhea called the Smoky 12. Stick around. So Ben Rhea is kind of an interesting company. Uh, they used to be an independent brand. Uh, I think they were called the Ben Rhea Distillery Company or the Ben Rhea Distilling Company. They changed hands in 2016. And after that, they kind of reimagined themselves. We had new labels, we got a new core range, uh, and that remained the case for another few years. Up until last year, 2020, they rebranded themselves again. Now we've got a new core range, new releases, and this is part of that. Um, their old master distiller prior to 2016 was a guy named Billy Walker, who's a really famous master blender. Now Walker sold Ben Rhea, Glendronic, and I think Glenn Glassaw to uh, Brown Foreman in 2016. So following that sale, he went off to go work for Glen Alkey at the Glen Alkey Distillery, leaving behind an empty slot at Ben Reich. That was filled by someone by the name of Dr. Rachel Barry. Before Barry stepped in, Ben Reich was kind of an interesting place. I mean, it still is, but it was a really funky distillery. I remember they used to have these really colorful bottles. All, their, all the releases had like Latin names and they were trying a little bit of everything. They had peated, finished whiskeys all over the place. They, they were playing with like really obscure wine casks. Um, doing really weird, really colorful, really eclectic things. They were definitely very interesting to follow. Um, hit or miss, a lot of their stuff didn't really work, but then oppositely some of it was really good. Um, but yeah, for me, I remember thinking this is one of the most interesting distilleries working today. Part of me kind of misses those old days, although I do like the direction that new Ben Reek is taking. Anyway, those days are gone. Uh, now we're talking about the new core range. Uh, the new core range, again, came out last year. Kind of an odd uh, collection of numbers here. You have two 10 year olds, two 12 year olds, a 21, a 25, and a 30 year old. So there's no like 15 or 18 year olds in there. I don't know why, I guess they're waiting for some stock to mature. I'm sure they'll come out with them eventually, but uh, this is what we've got so far. And I gotta say, I kind of do like the idea of having uh, two different releases of the same age at the same time. The reasoning for this is that they're doing one, uh, one version that's peated and one version that's unpeated. Another nice thing is that Ben Rieck, back in the day, they were, like I said, they're known for the kind of like their experimental approach. They really haven't lost that. So for both their peated and non-peated expressions, be they 10 or 12 year olds, they're playing around with casks still. There's like Marsala casks, there's port casks, there's bourbons and cherries. They're still doing a lot of sort of like toying around and tinkering with the whiskey, which is cool because that's kind of what they're, they, they've traditionally been known for. And the one we're looking at today, still doing the experimental thing. Uh, for this guy, we've got three different casts at work. We've got one that is bourbon, one that is sherry, and one that is Marsala. Uh, if you don't know Marsala, it's an Italian fortified wine. Um, I've had one or two whiskeys with Marsala finishes before, but I can't say I'm very familiar with it. Um, but according to the bottle, it imparts a smooth creaminess to the whiskey. Um, so yeah, in terms of specs, we've got 46%, we've got unchill filtered, and we've got natural color. So all of that's looking good. With regards to the new presentation, um, I do like this bottle. It's a lot more stout. Uh, it's not quite as tall as the older ones, but you have a fair amount of information here. You've got your casks used, you have your tasting notes. Pretty sleek, pretty simple, very clear, um, pretty modern. I like it. Um, I do wish they had the specs on the bottle itself as opposed to the box. Um, they should be writing natural color. They should be writing that it's non-chill filtered. All that stuff should be right here, clear as day. It isn't, but that's a small gripe. You've also got your bottling date down here on the back. Um, I think, you know, as far as bottles go, this is probably their nicest uh, looking core range so far. Their old ones were super colorful, which were kind of fun, but for like professionalism, I think this is probably the most professional look they've had so far. It's a handsome enough bottle. It's uh, what, three Jensen's out of five Ackles. It's good. Obviously that doesn't matter. Let's give it a nose. Okay, this is a nice nose. You have um, definitely some honey in here. You have some citrus, you have some vanilla. I'm getting kind of like a, a cool charcoal note. Um, really interesting stuff. White peppers in here, some caramels in here. This is peaty, but I wouldn't call it smoky. It's more, it goes more in the direction of peat than actual smoke. Let's give this a taste. Mm, okay, very nice. The arrival is pretty sweet. Uh, you definitely have some peat in here. You have some honey that you have some heather um, The fruity notes, uh, you know, you definitely get the, the the marsala cask or the sherry cask I couldn't tell you which one is which or you know I couldn't tell you which individual notes come from which kind of cask, but they're definitely in there You have a fruity touch um, 
creamy creamy texture i really like this texture actually it's good stuff and last but not least the finish let's go Okay, yeah, you uh, you get some cool notes in here. You get ash, you get molasses. There's definitely some oranginess going on here. I'm getting like orange peel, orange creamsicle. I want to say a bit of uh, a bit of actual cream is in this as well. Um, dark. This is like dark molasses. Um, there's a gentle oak note, but kind of sweet at the same time. It's like a sweet oak note, uh, and maybe some white chocolate. So what do I think of this stuff? I think it's really, really interesting how it's evolved for me. I remember when I first tried it, I didn't really love it, which is funny because this was the bottle I was most excited to try when they came out with their new lineup. Um, by chance, I ended up trying the other 12, the unpeated, the non-peated 12 first, and I really loved it. So that made me even more excited to try this one. And I'll admit at first when I did try it, I was a little bit disappointed. Um, it wasn't really my jam off the bat. It's something that I really had to get to know over time. Now, when I say the whiskey evolved, that's not to say the whiskey in the bottle actually changed much. Uh, that's not the case. It's more just like me. I kind of had to recalibrate my approach uh, because I kind of made a mistake when I first jumped into this is I thought this would be similar to an Isla whiskey. I thought I'd be getting sort of like these salty maritime type notes. Uh, I saw the sherry finish. I thought maybe I'll get something along the lines of uh, a sherried Kalila or uh, a Lagavulin 16. That's very much not the case. So if you go into this expecting it to be similar to that kind of whiskey, you'll probably dis be disappointed. Luckily, that opinion didn't stick. After I spent some time with this whiskey, I kind of warmed up to it. Um, it's got, like I said, some pretty cool flavors in here. The, uh, the sherry, the marsala, they do give it that fruity edge. You also have kind of like this charcoal molasses sweetness in here. Um, overall, it's a pretty sweet whiskey, um, never cloying but it does take you in a sweeter direction and you need to be prepared for that. Like I said, I've warmed up to it a lot just because I know what to expect from it at this point. I gotta say some of these notes are pretty cool. I like uh, the charcoal molasses note. I like the white chocolate. I like the creamsicle, orange creamsicle note. Uh, good texture, again, very creamy. I like how the sweetness comes on because I'm very sensitive to whiskeys that are too sweet. This is very sweet, but it's not cloying. It's not overpowering. It's not a sugar bomb by any means. The sweetness is very measured. It kind of reminds me of maybe like a rum cask finished whiskey. I don't know if you've ever had a rum, rum cask finished whiskey, but they are very distinctive. There's a, a really special kind of sweetness that's uh, that's in the finish that's kind of like this lingering note. This kind of reminded me of that, although obviously no rum casks were involved, but overall kind of a cool effect. So yeah, I do think this is kind of a cool little whiskey. It's got some fun flavors there. It's great as a casual sipper. There's a fair amount of complexity, but it works really easily. It just, you know, you can session this without thinking too, too much. Um, nice notes in here, great texture again. Um, like I said, I didn't love it at first, but I've warmed up to it. I'm really digging it now. I'm gonna give this one an 86. Price-wise, this sits firmly in the affordable category, uh, which is where it belongs, but I think it brings something new to that category. I like that it's a peated space cider that's doing something a little bit different. Definitely worth checking out. I would recommend it. Okay, that's it for me today, guys. Thanks again for watching. Uh, do me a favor, hit that subscribe down below, hit the bell, smash the like button, and give me some comments down below. Have you tried this one yet? Have you tried their new range yet? What are your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts on Ben Riek? And what do you think I should be reviewing next? I wanna hear from you, let me know down below, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.